Tom Ashbrook. This is On Point. We're talking this hour about women embracing witchiness. Not the Halloween witch of children's tales, but something more welcome and empowering, female empowering. Constance Grady is with us, culture writer for Fox. Alice Hoffman, uh, the novelist, joins us in just a moment. You can join us this hour as well. Do you get this? Have you heard it? Seen it? Women saying, I'm not a princess. I'm more fierce. It's a deeper, darker energy. You can say, which? And does which mean to you uh, cackling evil or malice? Do you understand why some women are embracing the word, giving the identity their own meaning of power, depth, uh, and alternative femininity? What do you think of this? Do you find it freaky, scary, appealing? 800-423-8255 is our number. 800-423-TALK. Alice Hoffman is the author of uh, Practical Magic and the Rules of Magic. Practical Magic, big bestseller. Joins me in the studio. Alice Hoffman, it's so great to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, you've been playing with these icons and ideas for a long time now, between Practical Magic and the Rules of Magic. Yeah. Um, do you see, uh, I don't know, over in recent years or over decades, a uh, kind of a growth in openness or an, an embrace um, more widely shared of women of some of some of these notions of the witch or witchiness? I think I think it has changed. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's an eye of newt caught here. <laughs> I think it's changed a lot. What do you think has brought this notion of witchiness into a more comfortable place in the hands and hearts of some in our culture? Well, I know that, for instance, Practical Magic, which was about 20 years ago, has now become a cult film that people watch every Halloween. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is um, this feeling of sisterhood that is very hard to find in other places and that the witch is really an iconic mythic figure and there's no other figure like it no princess no queen there's nothing the same as a witch there's no female figure that has the strength of a witch and i think now at this time politically mm -hmm. it's a time i think when women are gathering together there's a new kind of feeling of sisterhood and i think what you said before the whole me too mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> excuse me um Somebody clearly doesn't want me to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Lean away and have a good cough, if you will. And no, I'm good. You are, you're right? Yeah. Oh, um, so there are normal people who can do magic, um, and the most important relationship that they have is, is their sisterly bond between each other, which is part, I think, of the appeal of the witch fantasy. You know, you have the coven. You have this group specifically of women working together and being powerful together, which is part of what makes it so appealing. Um, and then we get into the way it's been seen. I mean, witches, you know, in Salem, they yeah. tried and killed the witches because this was uh, <coughs> this was uh, satanic. This was unacceptable. This was beyond on the pale. What's your commentary on that? Well, you know, those women were mostly women who were independent, mm -hmm. who had their own money, their own land, mm -hmm. who were old. Historically, this is the case. Historically, this is the case. Mm -hmm. And that made them a threat to uh, <coughs> order. Yes. I mean, their property was taken, mm -hmm. and they were a threat. And very often, I love that term, emotional realism, but very often there were women with power, there were midwives. They dealt with birth and death and medicine and folk medicine mm -hmm. and i think that's very threatening to you know to the patriarchy i think they are the threatening women and now here we are at a time when uh, you know there's a whole range of, of ways women are reacting to this and, and holding this some just embracing anesthetic others going much further than that saying hey right i'm a witch right uh, Fran is calling. We've got a lot of callers here. Uh, Alice Hoffman, please tell my author of Practical Magic and the Rules of Magic. Constance Grady, culture writer for Vox with us from New York. Fran in Detroit, Michigan. Fran, thank you for calling. You're on the air. Oh, thanks, Tom. What's your story, Fran? Well, you are speaking to a real witch. I've been a witch for 40 years. What does it mean, Fran? Witches are real people. Practice a real religion that is recognized by our government. Uh, witches practice what is commonly known as the old religion. What witches practice predates Christianity by thousands of years. Yes, witches, we are the healers. We, we are the nurturers. We are the teachers in the community. That is what we do. 
our religion is earth based. So we uh, we we revere nature. We give thanks to our gods and our goddesses. There are many different traditions in witchcraft. Not all witches are the same, and Wiccans are not witches necessarily. So. Some, some, some practice a Celtic tradition. I practice an Egyptian tradition. So we are very diverse. And what you see in the media, what is represented in film and television, is just a facsimile of what witches are and what we actually so, do. So Fran, you're, you're, you're a 40-year witch, you say. So let, let me ask you, I mean, the traditional depiction is of something evil and angry. Is that your... Witchness. That is again. That is uh, Hollywood. That is you know an image that has been perpetuated by the patriarch because to, because originally during the early days of Christianity the church feared women. They feared witches. They feared us because they wanted pagans to convert to Christianity. So how are you going to do that? You're going to persecute those leaders in the pagan community, which were people like me, witches. So people who have the knowledge and the skill to heal, to lead and aid and assist. And very often witches had, you know, financial means huh. in, the, in, in, those, in those early times. So you would persecute those people because you want to stamp out paganism, you want to replace yeah. it with Christianity. How do you do that? Halloween, for example, Halloween is really not what what we practice today. What we practice is something called Halloween or Solomon, which which is basically a this is the time of the year when the mundane world and the spirit world meet. This is the perfect time to reach out to your dead ancestors, to revere them to acknowledge their existence, to celebrate their legacy. Which? And this is the importance of Halloween to us. For, for, may I ask you, you say you've been a witch for 40 years. Um, are, did you feel free to say that 40 years ago? Do you feel freer to say that now? Are you, do you live openly as, as a witch in your neighborhood, in your society? I live openly as an individual. You know, I don't have to... I can hear that. I like that. <laughs> I don't have to walk around with a giant pentagram on my chest to be a witch. That, that's who I am. I was born this way. You know, I, I come from a long legacy of witches. So, it, just, it, it you know, I am who I am. I don't have to prove it to anyone. And if you ask me, I will tell you. If you want me to explain it to you, I will explain it to you. But I, you know, I value my privacy. I certain, yep. I, there is certain persecution in our community, uh, in the workplace, uh, which is are discriminated against. Some have lost their jobs. Uh, some have been harassed by their neighbors. This still occurs. You know, it's a, it's a lot like being black in, in 1950. Uh, you know, it, you, mm -hmm. you can be out if you want to be out. You have a street, you have a mm -hmm. right to be out. Mm -hmm. but which?